I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining with us again. And last time we were introduced to John Bringhurst, who gave such a wonderful story, and today we hear his other half, I always say better half, uh, Diane Bringhurst. Now, Diane, thanks for coming and Thank you for sharing me. your story. Are you also a native, were you born in Salt Lake as well? I was not. Or, I was born in Boise, Idaho. Okay. And yeah, and moved shortly oh. after that to Las Vegas, and that's where oh. I lived until I went to college. And you went up to BYU, Idaho? Yes, I did. Rick's yep. College yep. then, and that's where you met John? That's where we met. He tells us you waited on, on, his, on your I, on his I mission. waited. Yes, I did. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say I didn't date a couple oh, of times. <laughs> But I Snuck waited. A few I knew there, but... I knew I'd met the one before he left. So I... terrific guy, he's just sweet. And there's so many things that I was going to ask him, and maybe you'll share a few of those. But uh, so you were born in a were your folks LDS? And... My folks were LDS. Yes, yeah. I was adopted into an LDS home. Yes. Oh, I was. okay. And you uh, raised up and baptized. Completely today? raised up yeah. in the church and yeah. baptized today. Yes. And very active, I guess, as a young. Very active. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I was. Always active. Yeah. Now, you don't get the priesthood. Did that ever come up that you were, did you ever feel, not jealous, but ever no, think? Never, not once. Not once. Okay. They no. can have the priesthood. I thought I had enough to do, and I didn't <laughs> need to worry about the priesthood. <laughs> Good for you. And seminary? Did you take seminary? I went to seminary. I didn't graduate. I yeah. went four years, but my last year, I didn't go enough, apparently. Oh. Because I had a job at night, and... Just didn't. It was early morning, 5.30 you know, in the morning to oh, get up and get ready. Oh, you so. didn't get the time release like they do no, in no. Utah. Huh? And I, you know, not that that, I'm not making excuses for no, myself, but I didn't right. finish. But I loved seminary. Yeah. I can still picture my seminary teacher, her voice and her face. I, yeah. I loved seminary. Ever any questions ever come up that made, made you think back then? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Polygamy. Really? Really? She talked a lot about, I must have... Church history has always been very fascinating to me, and yeah. I thought I knew a lot about church history because I read the yeah. church history that we had right. available to us. Yeah. And so, yeah, I thought I knew a lot, of, <laughs> lot about church history, and polygamy was always very disturbing to me. Oh, even, I, even back then, huh? Oh, yeah, way back then. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. So what happens after school? You go on to... Now, at, at BYU-Idaho, you do have religion classes. Oh, yeah. And what kind of classes did you take? Did they... Just, um, I did have a church history class there, and I believe part, I, I, and the Book of Mormon class. Are they back to back? I think it goes I Book of Mormon and then church history. So Perhaps. those were the two that I took. Okay. Yeah. Anything there that was, that you remember? What... I, you know, I don't really, I don't have anything that came to me in, yeah. in those years. Later on I did, yeah. 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 Okay. So you go on and you, uh, John gets home and you... We got married. We, got we married. He got married in December. He got home in December and we were married in May. Yeah, he said it was a short time, but yeah. you were in love. And, and we were in love. Salt yes, Lake we Temple. Were. How was that Salt experience? Did you have any um, you thoughts know, of that? I do have thoughts on that. <laughs> that <was laughs> I was very um, excited to go to the temple. That's what I've been planning oh, for my whole entire whole life. life sure. and, but I, I didn't realize at the moment how much over we went to the live session, of course, in the Salt Lake sure. Temple, and I think that made it uh, especially overwhelming. The the whole it was long trying and trying to keep track of what was going. Oh, on. Oh, and trying to keep track, and yeah. the people kept coming in and out, and you know, and all <laughs> of that, and and then when we got done, we we went to a dinner. And all of a sudden, I was just so physically ill that oh. John had to take me 
to our motel. We were being sealed the next morning, and I was just overwhelmed, completely overwhelmed, and to the point that it actually made me physically. Oh. Yeah. Were you okay the next day to get I was. I didn't sleep that night. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I was okay. You ended up being okay for yeah. the... Oh, yeah. I was excited to get sealed. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what we do, and then you end up... Did you end up moving then to Idaho, or were you up there then? We were in Idaho yeah. right off the bat. Then we moved to Utah. Okay. And we only lived in Utah for a couple of years, and then we moved back to Idaho. Okay. We had two girls by the time we moved back to Idaho. Ended up with five kids. Five right? children. Yeah. Yep. Two girls, three boys. Oh, good. And they were all raised in the church, they and were so you just definitely just raised in the church. <laughs> a good little Mormon family. We huh? were. I don't know how good we were, but we were a Mormon family. <laughs> and you had lots of callings, too, didn't you, I over had the lots years? Of callings. Relief Society president, and what else? Primary president. I was in two or three young women's presidencies. You on the I stake was in the or? stake. I was in the stake young women's during the time that the temple was being built. Our oldest son, Sam, was on the youth temple committee, which we thought which was, temple was quite this? an honor, the Twin Falls Temple. Oh, okay. And so I, I actually prayed myself into that calling. I, I wanted to be involved in the temple celebration with my two boys that yeah. were involved in it. Okay. And in my mind, I was thinking something like, I could sew costumes or I could provide lunches or something. Yeah, do something. And just, and I was praying very diligently for an, an opportunity to help out with that. Yeah. And then I got called into the stake young women's secretary because she, the secretary was being released and they put me in and so of course that was a strengthening moment for me yeah that the church was definitely true <laughs> inspiration and everything huh? so what happens in life um life is just busy and we've got raising our five children and we're involved in our callings and and um then we had in our in our later kids' lives, um, we had a daughter who left. She never really, ever really believed in it. Left the church. Yeah, yeah. she was, it was just way too yeah. complicated. Was that hard? God was not that complicated in her mind. Mm. Oh yes, it was yeah. very hard. Yeah. I spent two years praying for an Alma the Younger experience for her. <laughs> <laughs> Did you feel guilty as a parent that you lost your um, little daughter? And not so much with her. I don't. I'm sure I did. Yeah. I, I'm sure I did. Yeah, I'm sure so. I did. Yeah. 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 And, and then, yeah. Um, but you know, the church was still absolutely true. Sure. And, and then our son came home from a mission. Our oldest son, Sam, and he also um, had some experiences and some troubling times. And started questioning. He left, and his were his reasons weren't her historical at first, but he. Um, he, came, he had a born-again moment that changed him. And yeah. then he talked to me about some things, and I agreed with a lot of the things he said, but still the church was true. Sure. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And then after, shortly after he left, maybe in a year, year and a half, John, I could see a big difference in John. And he would say little things like, we'd be sitting in sacrament, and, and he'd just say little things. And, and I can't really maybe say exactly what he said other than... He, I knew he was getting nothing out of it, and <laughs> then we would go home. And Is this say, like two or three, four years ago or so? Um, or? Yeah, yeah, yes, and yeah. and he would just say little things from time to time, and <laughs> a couple of times he would say, I'm getting nothing out of church, and I would just like, oh, what? I didn't understand that, because I was, was getting so tons, yeah. oh yeah, I was getting <laughs> tons of inspiration all over the place, and, <laughs> but you know, I knew that we were struggling with, a, with children leaving, and you know, things, yeah. Things are hard, and life can be hard. And but I didn't really ever consider the fact that you know he would not believe in the, the sure. gospel. Right. Not that people might say things that are not necessarily inspiring <laughs> from time to time, but but the church itself. But the church true. and the doctrine and the foundation, the Book of Mormon was all solid sure. in my mind. And I don't don't want to jump ahead, but now you start teaching a primary class together. Yeah, he was teaching that primary class for a while. I was in Young Women's, and mm. then when I got released, they called me to team teach with him. Okay. And I loved that, and I loved those kids. They were fun, and yeah. it was a great calling. In fact, he told a little bit, and anyway, I don't want to jump too far ahead. The right. summer our son 
was married in the Twin Falls Temple, he asked me, which was 2016, he asked me if I would look at the essays. And he asked me shortly before, like two weeks before our son was being sealed, and we were having the reception in our yard, and life was really busy getting prayer, preparing for that. But I didn't know what they were, but he told me where to find them, and so I looked up on the LGS org website and I read a few of them. I read the polygamy one, the book of Abraham one, the blacks and the priesthood one, and oh, the first vision one. Mm. And I did, I did have some issues with some of that. I didn't click on, click on the polyandry link. I didn't go that far and I was still able to justify everything <laughs> pretty good. And then just the way they want you to. Didn't sure. think about yeah. it again until after the wedding and um, back about around August, September, John was getting a little more vocal with me about things, asking me questions more often. And I started doubling down because I could feel <laughs> a shift taking place. And so I doubled down, went to the temple more, listened to conference talks all the time when I was getting ready for work and just... Reading the Book of Mormon more, I read the Book of Mormon faithfully, but just studying it more deeply, I thought. And yeah. finally in September, I just was feeling kind of discouraged, and I prayed to God, I'm never leaving your church, I'm never leaving you. I'll never do that. And then time went on, things were happening, and December came around, and we had a few more conversations, but all the while feeling very... Very, a lot of love from John, a lot of patience. Cons I mean, he was never frustrating. He was never approaching me out of any type of frustration. Showed love, huh? Yeah. Yeah. But little tidbits here and there, and yeah. Um, like he said, primary class turned to church history, and all of a sudden, I taught, well, the first week I taught the first vision lesson <laughs> with all the gusto of my believing Mormon self and believed it totally. And then a week later, we had a snow day from church. Oh, well, I've got to back up a week. And when he came to me and said, what do you think about this book of Abraham essay? Some, and some tissues. I didn't want to even talk about it. So I just said, John, where's this, where's this going? Yeah, why? Why bother me why? with this stuff? It's, the church is true. Why do I need to do that? And um, he said a few things, and he left the room, and I just honestly just fell to my knees and um, held up my hands and said, what do you want me to do, God? Just tell me what you want me to do. And I, I was not going to cry, dang it. <laughs> Well, this is so impactful on our lives, isn't it? I mean, we live our lives for the church. It's, it's our whole life. And then to find out that there's even a chance that there's a problem starts really shaking our, our lives right. up. Yeah. Well, anyway, I asked him what he wanted me to do. And then, a week, um, and then immediately I, I got this voice in my mind or impression. I, I'm almost thinking it was more of a voice that I heard something. But it, he said, just listen to John, just listen to your husband. Really? Wow. And I didn't want to. <laughs> of course not. I was not. pretty stubborn. I didn't understand why he would want me to do that. So I didn't ask him anything. But a week later, he came to me on our church snow day they, and said, would you listen to something with me? And because of that answer, I said yes. And... Honestly, after that was over, I, my um, whole world kind of came crumbling down. On that snow day. <laughs> On that snow day from church. <laughs> and we listened to a few other things, and, and then thus the journey began. And I um, looked at the lesson manual for the next week, and I, I saw that it was on the translation of the Book of Mormon, and... In a week's time, I knew that that has, was not how it had happened. And <laughs> I said to John, I can't teach this, can you? <laughs> so that's when we went to the bishop after that next lesson. And, and yeah, we, we've, 
we found that he had nothing to offer us. And, the bishop. Mm -hmm. He we, went, probably wasn't aware of the... He didn't know about the essays. He knew yeah. about the Joseph Smith papers and other things, but yeah. he didn't know. And, and anyway... Isn't that surprising? It is yeah. very surprising. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. I was disappointed, too, that when I went to my state president and his first counselor, and actually a couple of other people, um, there's no answers. They, they just didn't... Of course, the essays weren't out then, but they still didn't under didn't know. And what I, I think bothered me even more, because I'd been in a bishop break and they knew I'd been a bishop earlier than that and had been a very active, that they wouldn't say, well, what did you learn? What did you find out, Earl? I mean, we love you. We trust you. We know you're a what good did you Mormon. Know, what, did, yeah. what did you find out? Tell us about it. Nobody said anything like that. I guess you didn't get that either. No, not really. <laughs> no, especially not from the bishop. We, yeah. John laid it out pretty good and I, and I, um, yeah, I had a few things for him, and and but he asked us to just teach about Jesus, so we did that for approximately three months, mm. and then um, anyway, a lot there are it's the, so much happened. So much. It's yeah. just so hard to <laughs> compact it down. But anyway, um, finally we were teaching, and and the more we studied, the more we realized, and then finally I came to Blood Atonement. Oh, and. And uh, researched that. that. Yeah. I did not. I had never heard of blood atonement, and if I had, I didn't know that it was what it was. Something practiced here in the. Well, I didn't know it meant that that Christ's atonement wasn't enough. Yeah. And immediate, immediately upon hearing that Christ's atonement wasn't enough, I said to John, "I'm out." And he. He wasn't quite ready. He wasn't. He hadn't verbalized that yet. <laughs> he said, well, well, wait, what do you mean? And I was like, I can't believe in this church anymore. That was a big moment, huh? But we continued on teaching our lesson for probably two more months after that, and we would see the children come up and bear their testimony about, G um, about Joseph Smith and oh. never about Jesus. No. And that was really bothering me. And I, you know, I felt as though I'd already always had a pretty good relationship with my Savior, so, yeah, you know, where that were was you disturbing at with him to now? me. I, I had... Finding out the church wasn't true, did that... Oh, I immediately turned to the Bible at that point. Did you really? Yes. Oh, oh yes. Good. Yeah. I, I knew, I never, I won't say I never doubted, because when your whole foundation and your whole world of 55 years comes crumbling down in a big heap, <laughs> you kind of do wonder what is the truth. Yeah, get a little shaky about everything. Right, but yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't doubt Jesus because I had too many experiences with him. So Yeah, good for you. Did you, uh, you mentioned that you had a born-again moment. Was that kind of it with the blood atonement or did you oh, have, no. have something I, I else? I had a, a, a very strong experience when I was 14 years old oh. after a prayer to know him. And then as a young mother, I was struggling with a lot of, um, just a lot of pressure from life as a mother, life as a wife, church life member. as a church, <laughs> um, a person who worked hard in the church sure. and trying to keep it all together and do everything you're supposed to do. Right. And um, probably won't go into great detail there. No, that's fine. But I had a very strong experience huh? I was told I was forgiven uh, he was the one that did it oh so had you understood grace then maybe as a young person a tiny bit yeah more more so now though realizing what Jesus has done I had read a book on grace although it was by an author a, a Mormon author yeah but it was very clear that grace was all about Jesus and not about us. About us. So yeah. I had some little inkling of yeah. grace, but but there was still me trying to earn my way to the celestial kingdom. Yeah. You know, maybe I thought grace was for getting to heaven and works were to get you to the celestial kingdom. Yeah, something like that. I'm really embarrassed to say that now, but oh, I, know. I think that's what I thought. You had a couple of scriptures that really impacted you. When, yeah. I don't know where um, you want to. Shortly after knowing the church wasn't true, I read <laughs> John 14. 14, 6, um, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No uh, man yeah. cometh to, to the Father except through me. Yeah. And I think it hit me. I, I had heard that scripture. I'd read the Bible. Sure. And, but I think it impacted me that it wasn't about Joseph Smith or 
or even Thomas S. Monson. Or the temple. Or, or the temple covenants or um, yeah. the things, you know, the checklist that we had to do. It was about Jesus. It was only about him. Amazing. What was it? And you had another one too that you... Um, yeah. Um, Romans 3.24 um, talks about we all fall all short. We all fall short of the glory of God. And as Mormons, I think we think we're kind of awesome, that yeah. we've got it all together. We have all the answers. We know we're not perfect, but we know we're, we're not in pretty perfect, good shape. But we're working. Yeah. You know, we are really working. We're doing the right stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we're working hard, aren't we? And, um, and anyway, we all fall short, but that grace was given freely, yeah. freely through faith in Jesus. And that's one thing that struck me so much reading the Bible. This was a big, a big, big thing for me is that it always talks about believe in me, believe in me. Yeah, it's come not, to me. Come to me, believe yeah. in me, receive me, but it's not so much about, yes, there's things about being good and doing good. Of course we need to do good. Sure. But grace is, is because it. Because of love, right? It Again. is his love. Yeah. And, and he loves us, and he, he loves us in such a way that we can't even comprehend it. You were telling me a little bit about your first visit to a Christian church. Do you remember that? Yes. We went on Easter Day with, for the first time with our daughter, who had been out for a long time, of the Mormon church. And we went with her family and immediately drawn to the music. I, I won't say I didn't feel a little bit uncomfortable there because it was so much different than Music, what I was... Uh, the guitars and the drums. Well, yeah, just, and just the praise and the, yeah. you know, we're so reverent in the right. Mormon church, right? And and they were so worshiping. And I was, immediately it was like a big slap, like <laughs> they are worshiping Christ and they're singing of Christ and they're lifting up their hands to Christ. And then the pastor spoke about Christ, Christ, Christ. And... And I realized in that that one time going to a Christian church that they worshiped so much more in that one day than we had ever in the Mormon temple. Oh, isn't that amazing? What, kind of a slap in the face. It was you. a slap. It was a big slap for me, a, a wide awake. I was wide awake to that, that even though I thought I knew Christ in the Mormon church, it's vastly different. I'm so thrilled that you and John have been able to do this together. I guess it's been such a blessing for both of you, right? Yes. I didn't ask very John much. about that, but very much. I mean, to to honestly, if I was still in the church today, yeah, John would still be going because he, he loves you that much. He, that's just what he was going to do. He made up his mind. I had done that same thing with Carla. Yeah. I didn't know what was going to happen. How long did it? It only took you a few weeks though, right? <laughs> Once you're yeah, really soft. Yeah, from the time, because I've been praying for months for John to come back to the truth. Please mm. God, let him come back to the truth. Just let him come back to the truth. And, you know, never once did I say, God, what do you want me to do until that January day? <laughs> when I finally asked God, what do you said, want me to, to do? You know? <laughs> and he said, so I was praying for the wrong thing that whole time because yeah. John was coming to truth. Yeah. It was I who needed to come to truth. And do you do you sense that freedom and, and liberty and oh my the judgmentalness? Can I is just gone? say <laughs> <laughs> the unburdening the unburdening was pretty instantaneous for me once I figured it out. And I just have to say I'm so I I, I don't know if it, other Mormon women felt this way, but I was very dis, just distraught, but the, by the fact that I had to help create worlds and. And I was going to have children for eternity. Be, be a wife, of, um, one I, of many wives. I couldn't comprehend that. And it didn't, it, it was just, how in the world was I going to help John make worlds? And how was he going to make worlds? <laughs> and cre I just honestly could never wrap my head around that because we were just trying to get by <laughs> day to day. <laughs> Taking care of five kids. Well, my and even <laughs> just, just life and how yeah. we didn't know how to create worlds. We didn't. You know, so that was a great un, a great thing for me. It just dropped off, and I didn't have to worry about that anymore. And, and of course, that it wasn't about me, that it was about Jesus' Jesus' blood on the cross. It wasn't about my works. And yeah. boy, when you realize that, 
You feel like doing a few cartwheels, really, don't you? <laughs> you do. And you, and you feel like you're really on solid foundation yes. rather than a man's foundation. It's not on me. And yeah. I'm so full of failure. <laughs> you know, I just loved it. I really did. I noticed you're wearing a little cross there. It, oh, it just yeah. means so much more to us, yeah, doesn't it? Does. it? Yes, it does. Yeah, I've got one under here. I never wear it out, I guess, for the show, but uh, always wear a cross. And Well, so I've got just a couple of minutes left. Um, maybe something you want to say to your family or friends. And um, I'm sure you've been had some challenges that way. Yes, yeah, so it was. It's very difficult. The journey out when you're everybody, your whole world is a member of the church, um, is difficult. And um, we've had some difficult conversations. But um, I, I guess what I would like to say is trust the Bible. Um, don't read the Bible with your prior knowledge of the Book of Mormon. Just read the Bible for what it is. Um, not as being connected to the Book of Mormon, and I think you you will find a whole new understanding yeah. of who God is, of who Christ is. Um, our view in the Mormon Church of Christ is very um, tainted. <laughs> He's not our brother. No. He was never a man. Um, he was always God. Yeah. And he, he was willing to come and pay the ultimate price for our sins, and, right. and they're paid for. Our and, sins are paid for. And without. all we do is believe. Mm -hmm. He that believeth in me hath everlasting life. I think so much time in the is spent on unnecessary things. Um, how much temple attendance can we do? You know, how many times can we take a dinner to somebody? And and all that's great. You yeah. know, all the things you do. To help others is all good, but I think we need to spend a little bit more time coming to know who he is. I liked the little quote that you gave me earlier, and it, uh, I wanted to read it. Every day is a gift from God, not another day to perfect myself. <laughs> and and we, don't, we just can't appreciate that as LDS because we're working so hard to try to try to do what we think we need to to be perfect. The struggle and is real. And we can real. never be perfect. We can never be perfect. For Except for what Jesus did. We don't have to be. Yeah. He's perfect. So there's been a joyous journey, even though it's been a challenging one, I oh, guess. Oh, yeah. So. There, it, oh, it was very hard for a long time. But I feel very much like um, we're coming out of that darkness now. Mm -hmm. Well, I just wish the LDS would read more, study more. Study more. Learn. And why be afraid of the truth? I think John said something yeah, about the glory be, of God is intelligent. You know, I have to say this now that you brought that up. And uh, we've only got eight seconds. So. A new friend in the Christian Christianity said to us last week, truth has no agenda. Excellent. See ya.